my shadow right behind the door. <laughs> <laughs> so Let me remind you why you was here in the dark. I'll be that shadow that moves in the night. That monster under your bed is really Maurice Frenchy Terrio is one of the most shocking cases of demonic possession ever caught on tape. Like most cases of demonic possession, this case begins with a person who unwittingly invited forces into his life. The forces of the evil kind. Maurice Terrio's childhood was not a good one. As a child, Maurice lived a hard New England life. He suffered long working hours on his family farm. His father was physically and mentally abusive man, making the young Maurice's life a nightmare on a daily basis. His father would alternate between neglect and anger, becoming more and more violent towards his son. As French became older, his father expected more and more from him, even though he was still a young child. And things only got worse for the young Maurice. One day while doing his chores, he walked into the barn. He witnessed his father having sex with the barnyard animal. Frenchy stood there in shock and horror. His father laughed and flew into a drunken rage and beat the child to within an inch of his life. Frenchy was then forced to participate in acts of bestiality with his father. Maurice endured this forced sexuality for years. His father would sit there and drink his alcohol and masturbate while he watched Maurice have sex with the animals. They would do it together alone or he was forced to watch his father. Talk about father of the year. Frenchy's dad told the young Maurice that he was possessed by Satan and that Satan was after him too. And he would soon have control of the young Frenchy too. Frenchy was terrified. After one of his forced barnyard sessions, Morris ran out of the barn and fell to his knees. He broke down into tears and looked up to the sky. Frenchy began to ask for help. He looked up to the heavens through tears. He began calling upon to anyone who was listening to help him. Little did he know that he was hurt, but they weren't from heaven. It was something very, very evil, and it was only too willing to help. As the years went on, Frenchy began to notice differences in himself. He was able to lift things that no teenager or full-grown adult should be able to lift. He could even lift a 400 pound statue and walk with it. He had developed superhuman strength. He also had knowledge of things he had not learned in school. He could even speak and read other languages at will. He eventually was forced to quit school to work full time on the farm with his father. It was a living hell for the young Frenchie. His father worked him to the bone and would tell him he was useless. He tried to join the army when he became of age, but his attempt was foiled by his father. Maurice was finally able to escape, but the circumstances that led to his freedom weren't a good one. One day in a drunken rage, Maurice's father shot his mother and then committed suicide. Maurice left the house and floated around New England for years, doing different jobs and suffering through several relationships. He was a lost young man. He eventually settled down in warm Massachusetts and married a woman named Nancy. He and his wife settled into the life of tomato farmers. Despite years of abuse at the hands of his father, Maurice was known as the nicest man, a man that wouldn't harm a fly. But the demons that heard his cries for help that day finally made themselves known. In the spring of 1985, the town noticed the first signs of something unusual going on with Frenchy. He turned his guns into the sheriff and asked him not to give them back. At the farm, they suffered unexplained terrors. Blood would appear in and around the house and sometimes on Frenchy. His unusual strength continued. He finally would hear voices when there was no one around and things would move throughout the house and farm. Frenchy would drift away and lose chunks of the day. He would wake up in the middle of the night, staring at his wife. She woke up to him once, sitting there, staring at her with the eyes of a madman. Maurice Stadio began claiming he was possessed by the demons that were driving him to repeat the crimes of his father. This terrified his wife, Nancy, because she knew her father murdered her mother and committed suicide. Things started escalating quickly. Before long, Morris was beating Nancy. His voice would change sometimes, sounding unearthly and non-human. He also threatened to kill his children and grandchildren. 
The most disturbing activity involved the appearance of another Frenchie. He would be in one room and then appear outside another. His wife would try to follow him. He would be gone, and she would find him in the other room he was originally in, unmoved and unaware. He wondered why his wife thought he was leaving the room and playing tricks on her. This sometimes happened in view of other people. The witnesses could see both men within seconds of each other. Fires broke out on the property, eventually bringing the family to the attention of the local police. After another fire broke out, a neighbor called the police, and upon getting to the Terrio residence, they found Nancy Terrio nervous and crying. Police asked what was going on. Maurice Terrio walked into the room, and the police froze in fear. They seen Frenchie bleeding from his eyes. Father Boyer was called, who went to the home and witnessed all the strange happenings. He suspected that Frenchie was possessed, but first he had Frenchie physically and psychologically examined. These tests failed to bring a solution to the situation. He then contacted his bishop to inform him what he had found, that Frenchie was still bleeding from his eyes, but the bishop did nothing. The poltergeist activity in the house got worse. Father Boy then contacted famed demonologist Ed and Lorraine Warren to investigate. The Warrens were gaining popularity as investigators of the paranormal. They had already worked on several famous cases. The most known being the Amityville Horror case in New York. Ed Warren was classified as the only lay demonologist in the country. They brought their team in and witnessed dozens of examples of the evil presence. And the longer they stayed, the more intense the experiences became. The poltergeist activity even followed members back to their houses. The activity ranged from low-level poltergeist activity to physical attacks. All the team members, even the non-believers, found themselves involved in the poltergeist activity. They would suffer through uncharacteristic mood changes. They could feel the evil in the air. Frenchie's attempt to turn to God for help only resulted in more physical attacks. One night while trying to recite the Hail Mary to make the possession stop, he became violent and tried to choke his wife. The Warrens made the decision that this was not a normal haunting, but a case of possession. They called Bishop Robert McKenna who finally agreed to perform the exorcism. Although it had not been officially sanctioned by the church, there was no time to lose. After examining Frenchie, the bishop began the ritual. During the Battle of Wills, the demon identified itself as I am what I, and you say I am proud, and also invoked a name referred to by demons as the Legion of Evil Forces that try to corrupt humans. During the exorcism, Maurice bled from his eyes, his head split open, and boil eruptions appeared on his skin, even crosses appeared all over his body. The table began to rise off the floor in the room and had to be held down. This was all caught on film by the Warren team. The bishop and Ed Warren fought hard and chased out the demons. Frenchie's eyes rolled back into his head and became silent. Then he asked for his wife. For a while the exorcism worked, Maurice was happy again. He started expressing love again for his wife and family. Life was good. Or so they thought. Seven years later, in 1992, Nancy called Ed Warren with an ominous message. Morris was back to his old ways. He was starting to talk in tongues again and started beating her again. One day, Maurice hid in his basement and he waited for his wife while she was at work. When she got home, he called her downstairs. He then pointed a shotgun at her. The demons had taken over and they kept saying, Be your father. Be your father. She tried to push the barrel away, but he knocked her with the butt of the gun. Nancy ran for her life upstairs and out the door. She tried to run for help, but he fired from the house. The pellets from the shotgun ripped through her arm, but she was still alive. Maurice told Nancy, you will remember this forever. <laughs> Nancy looked at Maurice. He appeared to be fighting with something, something from another world. Something was trying to get the shotgun barrel into his mouth. He fought hard, but failed. The gun barrel was put in his mouth. He took his own life. He had become his father. To everyone watching this video right now, be very, very careful as to what you say in this world. You don't want to open the same door old Maurice Terrio did, where there is always someone listening. Welcome to my channel. This is Mr. Scary. Hope you enjoy the show.